This is a particle system I would like to share with you. Uh, just pushing, putting in some hours after work. I'm at home now. And I would just like to quickly show you what this does. But also first I would like to like acknowledge that this is made from a lot of knowledge from the community. And the main engine is based off a video that Joey Carlino made. I will link to the video like their video is going to be linked down in the description. So you can see actually where I got this inspiration from. Uh, his introduction of this new node that is only available in 3.4, as I understand. And so you will have to get Blender 3.4 for this to work. But okay, great. Good to give uh, Joey a shout out. And now let's uh, move on to the, uh, the main event. So this is just a particle system. This is something that I was scratching my head like so much in the past of like trying to use particles, particle emitters and forces and things to like keep everything in place and stuff. And like this is saving me so much energy, just creating something that just is contained and is calm and controllable. So let's just take a look at the controls that I made for this. Uh, the scale, I mean, most of them sort of will tell you exactly what they do. So you got scale, you got random scale, uh, voxel size, uh, I'll get a little bit into that maybe in the end. Density, just to add more particles in or increase the density. Arrangement is a pretty cool one. It will do sort of, it's like a seed on that sort of distribution of points within this uh, cube. So you can just, uh, sort of if you're not happy with the arrangement, you can just figure out, find a new one. Random objects is also uh, not possible at the moment because we only have one type of particle. I will show you this in a moment. Rotation is pretty, kind of cool. You can rotate the whole system. So this would be sort of something that you would otherwise use like a camera movement or something. But I thought it was cool to have the control of being able to rotate like the system on its own. Uh, then we have the collection here. I have just made two collections, one with these uh, ISO spheres and and uh, then another one with the uh, ICO spheres. <laughs> ISO. <laughs> okay. Uh, obviously quite tired after the day. Uh, this one has four objects in it. This is just some basic stuff. I'm not trying to make anything super fancy, just to showcase the project. So now also if I pause this animation, and then we can take a look at the random object feature. So here it is, random objects. So I can just toggle. So you notice that the actual location of the particles will not change, just the sort of, yeah, what, what particle is there or what object is there. So the spread, that's, that's where we were. So zero, zero, 001 gives us like this type of string. It's pretty cool. And then if you animate this, or like you just press play, because the animation is linked to like the timeline. So like it will just play. You don't have the keyframe that. And then if you drag down one of these axes, so you can actually animate this. I used this a, I used this a little bit in the intro of like making in the, you know, uh, but that was in the beginning of this video. So yeah, you can just play around with these values to get like really cool results. And if you want like to exaggerate that even more, you can, yeah, below here you have the speed. We'll leave that at 25 for now. The travel distance is basically just the distance of each particle, how far it can travel. So 10 is quite high. If I put one, you see they don't really go anywhere. Maybe I'll take this from cycles to something else. See what Eevee does. Okay. So, where are we? Here we go. Uh, we are here in travel distance. So see if I increase that, they will just sort of uh, be able to go further. So it will be more of this crisscross of particles. But if you want them to stick together, like sort of like, you know, school of fish or flock of birds, you can do this. And then if you want to exaggerate that even more, you would take the noise down to like 0 0.2 maybe. Let's see if we can get something like that. I'm going to pull the scale down a little bit. So this will be so now, 
we would also need to increase the speed of this animation. So let's do put 150. And now we start to see a little bit like that sort of movement of the noise texture. So if I put the noise texture scale up, you will see how they start to move a little bit more. Can put the speed up to even higher, 250. And the travel distance up. And then you, so you can, just by tweaking these sort of the speed, the travel distance and the noise scale, you can get all kinds of really cool shapes. And maybe this would be more obvious with the other system. Let's just go back into something like this. So you can see like how uh, you can manipulate this to get all kinds of different styles of uh, particle animations, right? The uh, noise or like the, uh, Noise jitter is just it's just the one from the noise texture if you're familiar with that. So we'll just create that sort of like uh, randomized noise in each particle. And then finally we have particle rotation, which is simply just the uh, individual rotation of the particles. So it just no matter the speed of the animation, you can sort of separate from that. You can control the the uh, rotation of each particle. That's it. So if you want to see what's under the hood, here we go. Uh, and uh, just feel free to also go and just screw this up, plug and plug something new in. Here we got like the, uh, this note here, the scene time. This is the reason why everything is playing. Just when you press play, if you connect it to the seconds instead of frames, it will drastically change the speed of things. But I mean, it's just, you know, and if you want to keyframe the animation rather than having it run by the, uh, like, uh, the time of the scene, if you would like to keyframe it, you can always just disconnect this one. Whoops. And then you could just connect this to... No, you can't do that. Sorry. You connect this one to here. Boink. And now we have a little input See this one here, input. And if I do that, if I go all the way to here, press N to get that sidebar, go into groups. And then the input thing here, we will just rename that time. Right, default zero, fine. So now, if I'm not mistaken, nothing will happen if I do this, but this is basically the time. So this would be sort of like the time in the ocean modifier or something. So you would have to keyframe this to be uh, like on the first frame. Then you have to type in like one or something. Keyframe that last frame, 100, keyframe that. And then it will play your animation. So you can keyframe this if you like. And notice that this has the little box now, which I, someone more clever than me can just tell me why this pops up there. Uh, I looked this up and I found this hack online. Uh, who, who was that? Ah, I don't remember who gave me this hack, but thank you, whoever you are. So that includes this really weird setup that I have absolutely no idea how it works, but you just connect, you create a new group input and you just connect all the ones that give you this into like a switch and go into like the switch input of a switch and that this disappears. It's just to get that little icon to disappear because I just didn't like it to be there in the menu. That's it. <laughs> but okay, so this is how you can do this if you want to keyframe your time. But I'm quite happy with mine just being like this. And I'm gonna just, uh, yeah, delete this time note there, just in case if that was what you were looking for. So now for the last part that I didn't show you so far is the voxel size, which is kind of a cool little thing. So now it is based of a cube. So it has geometry of a cube. So if you go into edit mode, you will actually see that there is a cube in there and you can kind of use whatever shape you want, but I'm gonna show you like a one cool feature. So if you go to edit mode, you select everything by pressing A 
X to delete all the vertices. So you still have the object there because you can see it in the outliner, the mess there. So the object is still there, it just doesn't have any geometry. So you can just press Shift A, choose different geometry. So let's say a torus, something like this, perfect. Go out of edit mode, but you will not see anything because the voxel size is too great. You need to pull this down. So now you can see how that how they align to the shape. If it doesn't look like this for you, you might need to pull the travel distance down to something close to zero. And then you can just tweak the density and whatever. And the cool thing we can do about this, so if I play this, the cool thing is I can go into edit mode, even while playing, have uh, the uh, uh, proportional editing on, select part of the mass and then just move it. And you can see that it will move the whole system. So you can actually create with like mesh modeling, you can sort of just create your own little star. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, or whatever shape. And then your system will just sort of have that shape. But that is dependent on the voxel sh uh, size being quite small. So if it goes up, you will actually start to see those sort of volumetric cubes or pixels forming, right? Oops, that's not it. So that's the voxel size. And if you want to just go back to the cube, go to edit mode, select everything, delete, shift A, get a cube back in there. Here we go. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you got something from this, at least to get the, uh, the file free down here in the, in the description and some links to some stuff. Uh, yeah, just uh, go crazy and uh, have fun and hope you make something beautiful. Okay, bye-bye.